I was uh, I was watching VH1, and uh, they, VH1 has like these uh, like countdown shows. They do it all the time. I was watching VH1's 100 Most Metal Moments, and uh, it was kind of what you'd expect. They was counting down the most badass metal things that ever happened in the history of metal. Uh, numbers 100 through 70, kind of what you'd expect. Uh, you know, hair bands from the 80s, that kind of shit. They get to number 69. Uh, number 69 is about this uh, Swedish band called Mayhem. Let me tell you the story of Mayhem. Uh, the lead singer one day decides that he wants to commit suicide. So he slits his wrists and takes some pills and he was like, no, that is not metal enough. So he puts a shotgun in his mouth and just shoots his head off. Uh, the, uh, the guitarist for the band Mayhem comes, stumbles upon the body, sees what has happened, and instead of alerting authorities, leaves and goes and buys a disposable camera, comes back, rearranges the body, takes pictures of it, keeps fragments of the skull to give to people who he deems worthy enough. The drummer for the band Mayhem finds out what the guitarist has done and murders the guitarist. <laughs> this was number 69 on a list of 100 <laughs> most <laughs> 68 was Bon Jovi doing a duet with Kiss. <laughs> it's Thursday night at Norman Music Festival, and we're here for the OKC Comedy Stage at Sooner Theater, and I'm here with DC Pearson and Spencer Hicks. How are you guys doing? Hey, man, how's it going? I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank okay. you, George. Well, okay, so uh, Spencer, tell me a little bit about how, you know, how the relationship with Norman Music Festival started and, and how this event has kind of grown over the years. Yeah, well, we started uh, in Norman Music Festival 2, but it was just all local comedians uh, just kind of playing in whatever bar would let us play or whatever. Uh, we did that um, for two years, and then last year we got to book a night here at uh, the Sooner Theater, and we had the Sklar Brothers as the, uh, I guess, the headlining comedian for the comedy portion of Norm Music Fest. And this year, we are honored to have uh, DC Pearson. Right, and and DC, uh, how were you? Uh, uh, how were you approached? Had you been to Oklahoma before to perform? I just have to say really quick before we start that I've, I don't have this good of posture in real life. So just kind of understand that normally I'm like sitting What's like this, but there's, I just kind of It's a great to simulation. It in. Right, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, but uh, yeah, I've never performed in Oklahoma City before. Sorry, I feel like I'm trying to be oddly quiet because there's a show going on directly above us. There's a comic standing right there, right there. <laughs> they could fall through at any moment. Exactly. That's part of comedy. Um, you could always fall through the floor. <laughs> part of comedy is poor architecture. Um, but no, I've never performed in Oklahoma City before. Okay, so how were you approached to come here, and did you know anything about the event? Um, I didn't know anything except for just what they said in the email, and they said that the Sklar Brothers had been here last year, and uh, I was aware of Norman as like a, a cool, excuse me, cool town and stuff, but uh, but yeah, I've, I've, you know, been here for three hours, we've had dinner, I'm drinking a large Red Bull, but not the largest one, because all things moderation, so uh, yeah, it's been going good. Okay, so tell me a little bit about like you know uh, what it's been like to promote this book, Crap Kingdom, and and tell me a little bit about the uh, about the story itself. Sure. Um, yeah. So I, I mean, in addition to being a stand-up, and I, I would say primarily, I am an author, and uh, yeah, this book, Crap Kingdom, is like a young adult comedic fantasy adventure about a kid who loves stuff like Chronicles of Narnia and Harry Potter, and anything where a kid gets taken from our world and into a fantasy world in which it turns out he's the chosen one. And that actually happens to the main character. He is taken to a fantasy world in which he is the chosen one. But it turns out that the fantasy world in which he's the chosen one is really, really crappy. Um, and so I've just been promoting it a lot. I mean, via, I mean, doing, you know, live shows. Uh, I, I've been doing a handful of book signings uh, here and there and uh, a lot of podcast appearances. Uh, it has kind of been my main avenue of promotion, I would say. Well, I mean, that's a really good avenue to promote comedy and, pr and to, pr you know, I mean, you know, podcasting has really taken off mm -hmm. as, you know, a as a great medium to, you know, d for comedians to get across, right? Yeah, totally. I mean, I think that I I'm, I'm a big podcast listener myself, so I really like listening to them and I also really like doing them because you just kind of get to hang out and have a chat. And I mean, I did y your guys' podcast earlier on the radio station here and uh, it really is just kind of like you're just hanging out and riffing with people and you see where the conversation 
conversation goes. And I think it's a good way for a listener to get to know you without it feeling too much like, I have this book, you should buy it. It's like you're hanging out with that person in your head while you're listening to it. So you get to decide whether you want to then make the next step and buy their book, which if the person is me, you should. <laughs> okay, now you've, you've made you know, one film mystery team with yes. Derek Comedy. Um, do you have any plans on adapting Crap Kingdom into a film? Uh, yeah, I would really, really love to adapt Crap Kingdom into a movie. I'm hoping someone will maybe buy the rights to it or something like that. And then I wrote uh, another book that came out in 2010 called The Boy Who Couldn't Sleep and Never Had To, which I'm working on with a couple of the people from, from my comedy group, Derek, who made that movie, Mystery Team. Uh, we're working on adapting it into a feature film. So we've written a script, and we're hoping somebody will give us lots and lots and lots of money to make it. <laughs> Very nice. Now, uh, Spencer, you just came off the stage. Yeah. Tell me, tell me what the experience was like. Uh, do you feel? Did you, you know? Did you feel like you connected with the audience here? And you know, I mean, is is this something that you feel like you guys are going to just keep on doing uh, during Norman Music Festival? I hope we get to keep doing it. Like the. <laughs> He's trying to talk you out of it. Yeah. No, please don't talk. <laughs> don't ever do it again. <laughs> I will. I will. I want to because the Norman Music Fest crowds are are amazing. Like, you know, it's. A weekend of, of awesome music from all around the country and uh, I mean the crowds are will, will go with you anywhere like you know most shows like Oklahoma kind of has a more conservative crowd whatever uh, these people are ready to have a great time and and they'll kind of follow you on outrageous tangents so it's it's fantastic crowd to perform to Excellent. all right thanks thanks so much you guys and good luck with your set awesome thanks man thanks all for right, having thanks. me thanks